Welcome to FX Street. If you like what we're talking about, you like the content we are producing, head on over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button on our channel, and you can follow me individually at Just Analysis One and at Kosh at Mangyeko Zero. Taking a look here at Ethereum, I mean, there's really not a ton of change compared to where we were back on last Friday. <laughs> there's, there's really not a whole heck of a lot to talk about. Um, and I know that seems weird, especially when we're saying, oh, worries about inflation, oh, worries about Russia, Ukraine. But, um, you know, those that nothing's really changed. I mean, it's it's just come down to where it was a week ago. And all it's really done is develop the structure for a bull flag. This inverse head and shoulders pattern is still here. It's holding support at twenty nine hundred. Um, it could dip lower to test twenty seven twenty five at the Kijinsen. Uh, but. I mean, I think a bullish breakout here is still the most likely scenario that to play out. But it should be a difficult break because really between 3,000 and 3,500, there's a huge cluster of resistance. You have, first off, you have um, um, 2022 point of control at, um, at uh, 3,100. Oh, and then you have the tank and send at 3,050. You have the... Uh, a 382 fib retracement at 3280. The top of the Ichimoku cloud, Cinco Span B, the hardest area to move above, is at 3320. And then you have the bottom of a prior bull flag at uh, 3350. So there's a ton of resistance. Did I say 3500? I really meant like between um, you know 3050 and 3300. There's a really, really big chunk of resistance there. Uh, but other than that, I mean... Uh, Again, I don't see a ton of uh, reason to be overly bearish here. You know, if it does move south, there's one more Ichimoku support level at 2725. But if that fails, I mean, there's another support level at 2500. The key thing to watch here for, from a bearish perspective is where the Chiku span ends up. If the Chiku span gets below the bodies of these candlesticks and closes below them on the daily chart, and that is that is pretty much sayonara. That is a say bye bye. We're gonna revisit two K, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred. Um that'll be that'll be the bad stuff. But if it can keep trudging higher and break out above thirty three hundred, that four K zone is next. And that's what I see. Akash, I'll, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you, John. So for Ethereum, right? Thanks. I'm gonna keep it uh simple. Uh, I'm looking at these two levels here, which is uh, the, the supply zone here, extending from 31.3.1k to 3.3k, and a demand zone here extending from 2.6k to 2.8k. For now, Ethereum is consolidating between these two levels here. A break of either of these levels will establish a directional bias. For now, the upside, even if, if even if we do get a close above the supply zone's upper limit here, which is at 3.4k roughly. Uh, then the upside is capped at 3.6k, roughly 3.6k, which is the uh, the confluence of this 100-day and the 200-day moving average. But if we get a close below 2.6k, then I'm expecting Ethereum to retrace to 2.4k, which if we get a daily close below that, then I'm expecting it to head down to 1.7, which obviously it contains a lot of liquidity resting below it due to the triple tap setup formed here between May and July. This scenario is only applicable if we get, if Bitcoin breaches the 34K level. So this is an extremely bearish case scenario. For now, I believe the, the upside for Ethereum is capped at 3.6K and the downside at 2.4K from a lower time frame perspective. Uh, we still haven't retested uh, this demand zone here. So a minor uptrend here on rejection, the 50-day moving average. And then we eventually see dip into this daily demand zone before we make a run for 3.6K. That's my take from a short-term perspective. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.